May I have your Lordship's leave to commence the proceedings? Yes, please. May I request the Learned Advocate General to kindly address? My Lord, the Chief Justice, Honorable Judges, Learned Additional Solicitor General of India, the Registry, President and Secretary of the Bar Library Club, the President and Secretary of the Bar Association, the President and Secretary of the Incorporated Law Society, and members of the Bar. The time has come for us to wish our Chief Justice fare thee well. Chief Justice. When we, the members of the Bar, welcomed you as the Chief Justice of this High Court on the 11th of October 2021, we told you a lot about ourselves. We referred to the rich legacy of the High Court, its traditions, and its luminaries. From the 11th of October 2021 till today, you have let the members of the bar know a lot about yourself. I will list some of the important things that you have let us know about yourself. First, your Lordship's impeccable disposition. You have been courteous in dealing with every single member of the bar, appearing before you to argue. Matters as also while interacting with you on the administrative side. Secondly, you have displaced displayed amazing judicial temperament. I do not recollect a single occasion when you lost your temper in court. You have not been a respecter of personalities. Instead, before you, it was a level playing field. You treated both seniors and juniors alike and equally. This would be reflected from the number of juniors who have appeared before you on a daily basis and argued matters of public importance. It would also be evident from the very fact that today's full court reference is being attended by a large number of juniors. Thirdly, as the Chief Justice, you have, entered mat you have entertained matters of moment at short notice. Fourthly, my Lord, you have not let anyone go away with a feeling that he or she was not given a fair hearing in the matter or was not permitted to present or place the client's case before the court. Fifthly, my Lord, you have spoken through your judgments. In essaying these judgments on a regular basis, you have demonstrated your vast knowledge of the law in different fields, civil, criminal, and constitutional. Your judgments have reflected sound analysis, which was to be expected given your brilliant academic record in economics. You have not shied away from deciding important issues and have made maximum usage of court hours. I do not recall you having sat late on any day. Lastly, in a state where substantial number of members of the bar forge their alliances and friendships on political lines and there is a heavily charged atmosphere your lordships have, in the hustle and bustle of heated arguments and exchanges, kept a level head and dispensed justice. I am sure it has not been an easy task for you to discharge your duties and obligations as the Chief Justice 
of this honorable court. On a personal front, I wish to say only this. I have appeared before you every day, day in and day out, in diverse matters. To me, it has been both a pleasure and a privilege. Our relationship as counsel and judge, as holders of constitutional posts, was based on mutual trust, confidence, and respect. I will miss you, and so will members of the bar. I wish you well in your next innings. I do not see you leading a quiet life. My only advice is, do not quit playing cricket. I wish you a very happy birthday in advance. May God bless you. May I request the learned additional Solicitor General to kindly address. My Lord, the Chief Justice, my Lords, the President and Secretaries of the respective Bar Association, the members of the Registry, all the learned members, including my brothers present. As a student of English literature, I had the privilege to study some books particularly relating to Ernest Hemingway's Farewell to Arms. That was a farewell for the purpose of peace. The farewell given to the students is for better studies. But this farewell for remembering the achievements of my lords and also the relationship between the bar and the bench. My lord, it is definitely painstaking for us that your lordship is demitting office today. And on this score also I'm tempted to refer to another brilliant essay of world's best essays, the Charles Lamb, the superannuated man. Charles Lamb said that when he was in office, he was feeling the monotony. And the feeling was that he is used to the desk, grown to the desk. This monotony is definitely associated with our day-to-day -day work. But a famous, a famous essayist, Professor Holden, who was stationed in Calcutta, in his beautiful essay, Imagination, said, past is poetic and present is prosaic, and every moment a drop, a fraction of the prosaic present drops into habitual past. Your lost ship's career will be passed from tomorrow. But then, what I can say that your lordship will have definitely a peaceful life, long life, and peace of mind, which Charles Lamb time and again said, after superannuation, what is needed is contemplation. My Lord Shakespeare said in his famous drama, Measure for Measure, that all swell that ends swell. Whatever we have seen, that your lordship's career has ended with wonderful achievements, and it is all swell that ends swell. I agree perfectly with the London Advocate General in his address that your lawship had a brilliant <coughs> career and that your lawship had maintained a wonderful relation with the bar. There is not a single case I have seen that there is an allegation or dissatisfaction of your, against your lawships administering justice. I use, I use your lawship a peaceful, long life and also Lord, definitely a very contemplated life. My Lord. May I request the President of the Bar Library Club to address? My Lord, the Chief Justice. My Lord and fellow members of the Assembly. Sorry. My Lord, the Chief Justice. My Lords and Ladies and fellow members of the assembled uh, body of the bar. I must confess to a problem in personally. What has happened is that I've been battling with the elements and uh, therefore I have lost for some time, hopefully, 
my ability to, uh, of, of speech and of thought. But I could not resist this opportunity to, uh, uh, to felicitate your Lordship on the occasion when your Lordship is demitting office. Well, the Calcutta High Court has a history going back to 1726 at least. And later, when the letters patent came along, in 1862, as I remember, the Calcutta High Court was established. It was, fortunately, as a matter of time and chronology, it was the first court in India to be established. Now, many people have derived comfort from the fact that starting from Sir Barnes Peacock onwards, they have, uh, they have the, the office of Chief Justice has been, uh, uh, has been, uh, uh, has been uh, uh, taken by them. Your Lordship should derive comfort and a quiet pleasure if I may say so, from the fact that your Lordship was preeminent, was in, uh, I beg your Lordship's pardon, your Lordship was in office uh, uh, of the uh, Calcutta High Court, which is preeminently the first court in India. The second point that I wish to make is that I wish your Lordship good health and a long life. Your Lordship should remember, if I may say so, that your Lordship has uh, performed public service. And it is in, in that frame of mind, with a quiet confidence, that you should, your lordship should, de, de, uh, your lordship should uh, 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 take quiet pride in the duties that you have performed as the member of the judiciary. Lastly and finally, I adopt all the sentiments that have been expressed by the Advocate General, and I have only this request to make. Your Lordship will please remember us from time to time. We are not people who put forward images of ourselves. We take, if possible, a quiet pride, if I may say so, if in our own heritage, our own genealogy, as lawyers of the Calcutta High Court. If we have committed any faults, then your Lordship will forgive us. And your Lordship, if I may say so, should always speak kindly of the Calcutta High Court and remember us at all times because we will remember you with gratitude. Thank you very much. May I request the President Bar Association to kindly address. My Lord, we had a saying that as sober as a judge, your Lordship fits into that sentence. We have never seen you and we failed rather to make you angry. That is our failure. And as, as has been said earlier, that nobody felt that he has not been heard. I may lose, but your Lordship has heard with a smiling face, which is still evident now. We shall remember your Lordship. Uh, and my Lord, whenever you come, Lord, kindly come to the High Court to f so that we can feel your presence. Thanks.
May I request the Vice President of the Incorporated Law Society to address? My Lord, the Chief Justice, my Lords, the Learned Advocate General, the President and Secretary of the Bar Library Club, Mr. S.K. Kapoor, uh, the President and Secretary of the Bar Association, <coughs> the Registry, and my friends and colleagues present in this court. Lord, after a brilliant academic career, my Lord joined the Bar on 2nd of February 1987 as a junior to Sri Dharmadhikari and practiced in tax, civil and constitutional matters both before the Honorable High Court at Madhya Pradesh at Jabalpur and the Honorable Supreme Court. In course of time and by dint of your merit, my Lord was appointed as the Standing Counsel for the State of Chhattisgarh in Supreme Court from June 2001 to December 2004. My Lord also represented various state undertakings and corporations of the State of MP and Chhattisgarh before the Honorable Supreme Court. My Lord was elevated as a judge of Madhya Pradesh High Court on, in January uh, 2008 and became a permanent judge in January 2010. My Lord joined the Calcutta High Court on 11th of October 2021 as the Honorable Chief Justice. In, courts, in course of My Lord's tenure as Chief Justice, My Lord dealt with very many important matters and have delivered important judgments. We have always found your Lordship as a calm, cool judge who gave patient hearing to the advocates. My Lord's amiable uh, disposition and the 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 management of the courtroom gave confidence to the junior lawyers to come and argue before your lordships. The, the demeanor uh, of uh, your lordships in court and your lordships' behavior in court encouraged everybody to come and argue their case before your lordship. And in fact, as seniors also, we found comfort in coming and arguing a case free of tension. Lord, today, after more than 14 years in the judicial work, my Lord is going to find some time for your lord Lordships and for your Lordships family. Uh, it will be a departure from your Lordships' regular hectic lifestyle that your Lordship was used to. In the last year and a half, as an office bearer of ILS, I have had the pleasure of interacting your, with your Lordships on behalf of our library regarding various administrative issues, about which we had submitted several representations. I will cherish these meetings which we had with your Lordships. Though at the end of the day, we got some of our prayers and some were kept pending, but we have no regrets on regard to that. We were happy to have had, have had your Lordship as our Chief Justice and will remember you as a good human being and a good judge. I, on behalf of the members of the ILS and the members of the Bar, do hereby bid farewell and say, my Lord, fare thee well. We pray to God for your good health and long life. May I request the Honorable the Chief Justice Prakash Srivastava to kindly address. My esteemed sister and brother judges, learned advocate general, learned additional solicitor general, president and secretary of the Bar Library Club, president and secretary of the Bar Association, president and secretary of the Incorporated Law Society, members of the three wings of the bar at the principal seat, as well as at the circuit benches members of the Learned Registry, officers and the staff of this Honorable Court. A very good afternoon to all of you. I humbly acknowledge with gratitude the kind words spoken by the learned speakers. 
when one, when one demits office, his entire career is replayed in the mind like a movie. All good and bad moments come alive. After working as Chief Justice of High Court at Calcutta for about 11 months, now the time has come for the farewell. High Court at Calcutta, which is a chartered High Court, embodies glory, rich tradition, unique customs, coupled with galaxies of eminent judges and illustrious lawyers, and they all have contributed to confer upon this court <coughs> to an and be able to stay here. This court has witnessed innumerable historical moments and served as temple of justice to millions since ages. I feel blessed that I was given an opportunity to work as Chief Justice of such a prestigious High Court. When I was appointed as Chief Justice of this High Court, I was very apprehensive as I was told that it's a difficult high court. But after working here for about one and a half years, my apprehensions have been proved to be wrong. My journey as the Chief Justice of the High Court at Calcutta has been smooth, satisfying, and full of rich experiences. I am one of those who had chosen law as a career by choice. When I was in class eighth in the school, I had secured merit position in the divisional merit list in the annual examination. At that time, my interview was published in the local newspaper with the heading, I wish to become a lawyer. That interview was in fact given by my father as I, I was enjoying my vacation somewhere else. My career as a lawyer was decided at that time itself. After practicing as a lawyer for a brief period in Madhya Pradesh High Court, I had shifted to Delhi with the dream to practice in the Supreme Court. When I was fairly well settled in the Delhi, I got the offer of elevation as a judge of Madhya Pradesh High Court. Initially, I was hesitant, but was persuaded by my family members to accept it. It was a difficult decision but I took it as an opportunity to serve the institution which had given me so much. My journey as a judge had started on 18th of January 2008 when I had taken oath as a judge of Madhya Pradesh High Court. In the oath ceremony at that time, I had referred to four Ps as the quality of judge and those four Ps were punctuality, probity, promptness, and patience. I have tried to imbibe and follow these four Ps throughout my judgeship. It has given, it has been my continuous effort to adhere to judges' prayer, that is, give me grace to hear patiently, to consider diligently, and to decide justly. Grant me due sense of humility that I may not be misled by willfulness, vanity, and egotism. I leave it all, I leave it to all of you present here to judge if I have succeeded in that. This is the time to offer my pranam to my parents who are sending their blessings from heaven. My father was my mentor and guide who had chucked out my path in the legal profession. My mother was source of inspiration. My wife, Pradipti, who is present here, is the pillar of my strength. And my son, Pratyush, and daughter, Priyal, had always understood the pressure of my work and never complained about it. My all other family members were always standing by my side at the time of need. Without their encouragement and support, it was not possible for me to reach to this position. I remember with respect my seniors in the profession who had helped me in the formative years in the profession 
and all the honorable judges of Madhya Pradesh High Court who had cooperated with me in performing my judicial and administrative work. When I had taken oath as Chief Justice of this court, there was restricted hearing towards the end of 2021 and beginning of 2022 on account of COVID pandemic. I had received the cooperation of all in a starting physical hearing while continuing with the hybrid mode with restoration of full court working hours. The members of the computer committee and the IT team had rendered valuable assistance to bring about positive e-infrastructural changes to make the working in the court more efficient. I am hopeful that such initiatives will bring fruitful result in the long term. I could persuade the state government to hand over the B block of the new secretary building which solved the immediate space crunch and shortage of courtrooms faced by the High Court. With the concerted efforts of all and appointment of additional judges in the last one year, the disposal in principal seat was higher than the institution. My sister and brother judges in the bench were very cooperative and had helped me in discharging my duties, both on the administrative as well as on the judicial side. I express my gratitude to them. I would also like to put on record my words of appreciation for the able assistance which has been rendered by the Learned Registrar General and the team of Learned Registrars in implementation of the day-to-day -day administrative decisions and helping me in the smooth functioning of the court. My additional secretary, my OSD, had worked relentlessly to make my task easy. My court staff, ACOs, AR courts, PAs, court clerks, peons, orderlies, all have assisted me and have performed their duties sincerely, which helped me in achieving the object of rendering justice. My personal staff took good care of me. The journey of discharging the judicial function in the court was smooth for me because all the senior and junior members of the bar had extended their able assistance in reaching assistance to me in reaching to the correct decision. In my court, I have seen many young, capable, and upcoming lawyers. They are required to be supported by the seniors. I wish them good luck and bright future. I'm also thankful to the Learned Advocate General and his team, Learned Additional Solicitor General and his team, and the office bearers of three bar associations who have always cooperated and have assisted me in discharging my judicial function. I have personally and professionally grown leaps and bounds with every passing day from my sister and brothers on the bench to the members of the bar who have appeared before me. I am deeply grateful for all your love and untiring support. I take this opportunity to thank the judiciary of West Bengal and Union Territory of Andaman and Nicobar Islands for their constant support. I am sure that they will stand tall always in discharge of their duties. They have helped me in my attempt to render justice to the people of the state of West Bengal and Union Territory of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and especially to those groups who are oblivious of guarantees that the glorious constitution of this country affords to them. I have faith that my sister and brother judges will continue the crusade. I have enjoyed living in this land of legions and culture with rich heritage and affectionate people, having remarkable talent in the field of literature, art, and drama, and having the taste of delicious food and variety of sandesh. I am ca carrying cherished memories of my stay here with me. I wish to complete my speech with the ever-relevant words of Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore, translated in English, which says, 
from this heart of mine, its hand folded in prayer. What I have given you was your own gift to me. The more you accepted, the more indebted you made me. My friends, farewell. He bandhu bedai. Shobai ko amar shubho kamnai janai. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, Lordship. May I request, uh, may I have the leave of your Lordship to declare the proceeding as concluded? Yes, please.